afternoon, Year Six, and welcome to our topic lesson this afternoon. Uh, learning this week is writing a biography about a significant individual, and I will present my screen to you now. Obviously, we are a week behind with topic because we had you had an amazing snow day last week and sending loads of amazing pictures of the fun you were having. So. We have a lesson that is probably going to take us two weeks to get through because I want you to write a draft of your work and then submit it to be marked by your teacher and then um, redraft. So Monday the 1st of February 2021, our topic of course is me, myself and CSI and our focus is English and biography writing with some science thrown in there as we learn about Charles Darwin. So our learning, so our learning this week is to write a biography. Our focus is to write using the key features of the biography and our purpose is to write an account of the life of a significant individual. In this instance, we are writing about Charles Darwin. Our assessment is you will write a clear, informative biography about Charles Darwin using the key features learned. So I'm going to take you through the slides that um, remind you what a biography is and how they are written, how they are set out. And I will use a biography of one other significant individual to take you through the key features and what it will look like. And then we will learn about Charles Darwin. And you will go off and start to prepare your biography about him. So what is a biography? So the dictionary definition. So it is a noun. So and it can be a plural noun, so biography. So there can be more than one biography. So if you started to research Charles Darwin, you would find that there are several biographies about him. And the definition is that it is an account of a person's life, usually someone famous, written by someone else. That's the difference between biography and autobiography. A biography is always written by another person. An autobiography is written by that person themselves. And synonyms for biography are life story, life history, memoir, profile, account, or a bio. So the structure of a biography. When we write a biography, it always has to have a clear introduction. It introduces who you are writing about and explains why he or she is famous, well known, or a significant individual. It should be written in chronological order, starting with their early life and childhood and working through their life story in time order. And that's what chronological means that it is in time order. So you can't write your introduction and then go on to adulthood. You have to write about the set stages in that person's life in chronological order. The final paragraph should include why they are remembered and the impact they had on the modern world. It should be written in the past tense because you're writing about someone, in this case, who is dead. So it is in written in the past. Third person should be used throughout, he, she, they. You should use fronted adverbials, especially adverbials of time to show time order. For example, after, next, sometime later, before, previously, eventually, after a while, as soon as he could, immediately. So there's plenty of opportunity to use those fronted adverbials in your biography writing and it would that will be one of the key assessment points that we're looking at that you have used those. It's in, they are interesting um, sentence openers and you should be using a range of sentence openers. You should include significant dates and they should be linked to the events that you write about. And for example, you'll be writing about a journey that um, Charles Darwin took to the Galapagos Islands. So you should include the date um when he started off on his voyage and 
you can use quotes either from the subject themselves or other people. So you could um, find a quote about how he felt about something on one um, at some point in his life and include that in your biography. So I'm going to start off with showing you a biography of a significant individual. And our significant individual is Mary Seacol. You may have learned about her previously. Um, I'm not giving you a biography about Charles Darwin because otherwise that means that the biography is written for you and this really needs to be your own work. So we're going to start off with our introduction. So our introduction is here. So Mary Seacol born Mary Grant, that was her maiden name before she married, Seacole was her married name, um, was a British Jamaican woman who became famous in the 19th century as Mother Seacole due to her work caring for injured soldiers in the Crimean War. So that opening paragraph tells you why she is, who she was and why she is remembered. So it then goes on to Mary's early life. Mary Ann Grant was born in 1805 in Kingston, Jamaica. Her father was a Scottish soldier and her mother was a well-known Jamaican doctress who treated people using herbal remedies such as aloe vera and ginger. A doctress is someone who hasn't got a medical degree but who can heal people through their use of more natural um, remedies. So using those herbs and natural remedies around her. Mary also had two siblings, Edward and Louisa. And you could um, expand on that, um, that sentence saying how old they were. Were they older than her? Were they younger than her? Was she close to them? As a child, Mary was fascinated by her mother's work and practiced the skills she learned using dolls and pets as patients. By the age of 12, she was helping her mother as a nurse. Because of her father's connections, she was also able to travel to visit England in her teens. And this made it her quite unusual for a black person at that time. So at that time in society and in history, um, the black people didn't really travel much. They stayed where they were and it was quite unusual to see um, a young black person traveling. When she was 31, Mary married a naval officer called Edwin Horatio Seacole. She was a good businesswoman and together they ran a successful store. Unfortunately, her husband died only eight years later. In 1853, she went to Panama, where her brother lived, and opened a hotel for gold miners there. She continued to look after ill people and even risked her own life to care for the victims of an illness called cholera. So that is um, develop, uh, how her life developed. So she married and she set up a business, ran a successful store. So you could improve on that. You could say what sort of store, what sort of shop was it that they ran? Um, and what made her a good businesswoman? How did her husband die? Did he die of a disease? Was it, did he die? Um, in an accident could you find out so you could expand there's a lot more here that you could expand on and I'm hoping that when you write your own you will see this in 1853 she went to Panama so she went to another part of the world to um, be with her brother and so she opened an hotel a hotel so a business for gold miners at the time people were hunting gold all over the world and they wanted to find as much as they could because it would make them rich. But her um, desire to help people continued and she did look after ill people and risked her own life. So she put her life on the line to care for people with an illness called cholera. So you could expand on that. What was cholera? How did it affect humans? And how did she help? So the Crimean War, so the next stage in Mary's life. The Crimean War began in 1854. Mary was determined to help the soldiers, so she travelled to London and offered to go with Florence Nightingale nurses. So she travelled all the way from Panama 
Panama back to London to go to the Crimea to work with Florence Nightingale's nurses. However, this was a time of racial prejudice. So um, black people weren't really welcomed um, and into the white people's world and they weren't allowed to do um, things, some things that white people were allowed to do. So, which meant that black people were not allowed to do certain things. The government refused to cooperate with her, probably because of rach, racial narrow-mindedness. So they wouldn't help her, they wouldn't support her in going to work with Florence Nightingale's nurses, purely because of her skin colour. So instead, Mary and Thomas Day, a family friend, went to Crimea together, taking medicines and stores. So taking um, provisions that would be useful for um, the, the injured to have. They set up the British Hotel, which was a simple building that provided medicine and hot food to fortify the soldiers. Fortify means build them up to keep them nourished. Additionally, we've got a nice sentence to open there. She sold clothing and blankets to make them comfortable. Unlike Florence Nightingale, Mary Seacole treated the soldiers' injuries even in the thick of the fighting. They called her Mother Seacole because she was so kind. She said in her autobiography, so she wrote an autobiography, she wrote about her experiences from a first hand perspective, um, but there's also biographies about her and here we've got a quote it was the grateful words and smiles which Freedom rewarded me so it'd be great if you included a quote in your biography and because she's included a quote here we've got quotation marks so make sure if you use a quote that you put them inside those inverted commas at the end of the war in 18 so Mary's old age at the end of the war in 1856, Mary returned to England with very little money. However, veteran soldiers started a campaign to help her and she was therefore able to live comfortably until her death on the 14th of May, 1881. So all of the work that she did cost her money. The travelling to get to Crimea cost her money and she used her own money buying the stores the food, the blankets, the medical supplies. So that left her with very little. However, when she came back, the veteran soldiers, those are soldiers that fought in the war, did something to repay her. They helped her. So they were able to raise money for her to live a comfortable life. Some people have criticized her fame because she was not a real nurse like Florence Nightingale. But she must be regarded nowadays as an excellent role model for doing good work in difficult and dangerous situations. So some people did not agree with the fact that she became famous because of the work she did, because she wasn't a qualified nurse. But it was difficult for black people to get qualifications like that in those days. So nowadays, um, people regard her as an excellent role model and look at her as a heroine, a hero of her time. And I think that is rightly so. But here we can see that the final paragraph takes us back to our opening. So um, she was an excellent role model for doing good work in difficult and dangerous situations. So that's closed our biography. So here on the page, we've got a breakdown of um, some of the features that are used to make this an excellent biography. So in the opening paragraph, we've got you we've got use of brackets for parentheses. So that's a, a higher level of writing. We also have a relative clause who became famous. So we've got a relative clause there. And she's got using, we've got linking phrases due to her work. So We've got lots of writing elements that we should be including in our writing. Here we've got the word doctress, which is vocabulary that is important to describe what she did. And it has a purpose to tell the audience, um, describe to the audience what she actually did. 
And again, we've got who treated people. So we've got a relative clause. And again, we've got parenthesis. So use of brackets. So here we've got a linking phrase as a child. So um, use of adverbials. And we have got complex homophones, which we've been learning about, practiced and patience. And we've got by the age of, so here we've got link more linking words, those adverbials of time and place. Here we've got appropriate grammar. So we've got because of her father's connections. So we've got that higher level of grammar so that um, her vocabulary matches her purpose. And again, she was also able to travel. So again, she was using correct and high level vocabulary to raise our writing standards. OK, so when she was three, so we've got those adverbials again, those sentence openers that I talked to you about. Unfortunately, again, we've got one here and here again in 1953. So we're using adverbials of time and place and making sure that we're building that cohesion within our writing where her brother lived so we've got again a relative clause expanding on that information so making our sentences more informative adding that extra piece of information and again we've got victims so um we're using grammar that is appropriate to what we are describing. So here we've got soldiers, prejudice, government. So we're looking at our spellings and making sure that our year five and six spellings are spelled correctly within our work. And then this was a time of, so again, we're selecting the vocabulary that matches the purpose of our writing. And then we've got words with prefixes, cooperate, spelling those correctly. Again, we've got parentheses, brackets, and relative clauses, which was a simple building that provided medical and hot food too. Fortify, so special, so we're spelling those nouns and adjectives with um suffixes this time so we've got 45 additionally so we've got those adverbials again adding using those sentence openers to make our writing flow and not be repetitive so our sentences open differently and in the thick of the fighting again using those linking words and phrases that's put our writing upper level at the end of the war. So we've got our time adverbials there with very little money. So we've got um, appropriate grammar and vocabulary that um, is aimed at our audience and other spellings that need to be spelt correctly from a year five and six spelling list and criticize as an, a suffix a word with a suffix so our root word is critic and we've got criticize so there's a helping hand at the sorts of um grammar and punctuation that you need to include to make your biography as interesting as possible. So now onto our subject, onto the life of Charles Darwin. So who was Charles Darwin? So we're going to learn about who was Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was born on the 12th of February, 1809 in Shrewsbury, England. So we've got a map on this page, so you could choose to include a map of where he was born when you were doing your writing, showing where um, were the yellow part of the map is England, purple Scotland, red Wales, Ireland, and Era. 
So, and this is where Shrewsbury is and in England, roughly. So when he was nine years old, Charles Darwin went to Shrewsbury School for boys. Darwin did not particularly enjoy school and found some of the work like Latin and Greek hard. He did, however, love science and was always asking questions. When he was 13 years old, he set up a science lab in his garden shed. So his love of science was so great that he developed a way of setting up a science laboratory in his garden shed. So when he was 16 years old, so his life is moving on now, Darwin was sent to Edinburgh in Scotland to train to become a doctor like his grandfather, so his father, grandfather and brother, who were also doctors. So we've got here, we've got our relative clause. So here was Shrewsbury and here is where we were sent. It's quite a long way actually. However, Darwin did not enjoy it and knew he did not want to become a doctor. He didn't like looking at blood. He, he didn't like blood and it sent him quite funny in that he became quite faint when he saw blood. His father then sent him to Cambridge to become a vicar. So his father didn't quite know what to do with him. So he couldn't be a doctor. Um, so he thought he'd send him off to train to be a vicar. But he was more interested in learning about nature and animals. So even though his father sent him off to become a vicar, it, it, it wasn't what he wanted to do. His love, his interest were in nature and animals. He had lots of friends and teachers at university who helped him to learn more about these things. So you could find out if there are any significant individuals in his life that um, really supported him to find out about this. Because I don't think his father would have been very happy that he's tried his hands at two careers, but he's still not doing um, what his father wants him to do. Darwin passed his exams to become a vicar, but he did not want this to be his job. John Henslow, a teacher from Cambridge, sent him a letter saying that Robert Fitzroy, the captain of the ship HMS Beagle, was looking for someone to be his ship's naturalist. Now, a naturalist is someone who works within science and nature. And so he's, he wanted someone to take on this role on the ship. So John Henslow knew about um, Darwin's love of um, nature and animals, and he knew that he didn't want to become a vicar. So he was helping him, he was supporting him. So here we could improve this and say who was the captain of HMS Beagle. The person would have to explore, collect and record information about the rocks, plants and animals that they found on their trip. Darwin knew that this was his dream job and so persuaded his father to let him go on the trip, which would have been quite a difficult thing because his father, I think, um, had had quite enough of him trying his hands at different things and not quite um, getting there. So here is a model of HMS Beagle and if you wanted to include a photograph, a picture of that in your presentation, then you you can. We'll be looking more at HMS Beagle and the voyage, the route that you took in another lesson. So the Beagle set sail on her voyage in 1831. Ships are always um, regarded as female. Living conditions on the ship were hard at times. There were not a lot. Of, there was not a lot of room on board. Of the ship held 75 people, and it was always very dusty. And smelly because you wouldn't have the um the resources and luxuries that we have today like flushing toilets and um running water and um, they wouldn't have had those so it wouldn't have been the cleanest of places to um live darwin was often seasick and also caught a fever but he was always glad that he made the decision to go on the trip the Beagle's voyage lasted for five years. They travelled to South America to re and reached the Galapagos Islands. When he was, went ashore, Darwin found plants and animals that nobody had ever seen before. 
So these are some of the animals that Darwin discovered living in the Galapagos Islands. So finches and a Galapagos tortoise. Darwin wrote down all of his findings and sent home information to England about all of the things he had found. When he returned home to England in 1836, he continued studying plants and animals and was now a well-known scientist in England. In 1859, Charles Darwin wrote a famous book all about the things he had found on his travels. After 20 years of studying, he had an idea that the plants and creatures he had collected hadn't always been the same as they were when he found them. He thought that millions of years ago, living things had started, had all started off in the same way and had gradually, very, very slowly, over hundreds and thousands of years, changed. In this way, lots of different animals and plants had developed. This idea is called evolution and we will be looking more at evolution in our following lessons. Charles Darwin died on the 19th of April 1882, and even now, over 100 years later, people are still talking about his ideas and findings. In fact, only last week in the news, there was an article about a scientist who had discovered the answer to a question that had been um, perplexing Darwin throughout his time um, of studying nature and evolution. And as I say, we're going to look closer at evolution over the next few lessons. OK, so this is an information that you need to create a biography about Charles Darwin. If you want to, you can research um, further and um, take notes that's entirely up to you because I do think there is room for improvement in that biography and that information so you could talk about how he collected um, the samples that he collected when he was in Galapagos what what was important about the creatures that he found how did he record things because he didn't have a photograph or a, he didn't have cameras they didn't have cameras in those days or computers so how did he record his um how did he record his findings how did they get back to england if it, it took them five years to actually travel to the galapagos island there's so much more information that you could add to that to that biography. So on the slides now, I have included two different ways you can present your biography. You can, if you want to write it on using pen and paper, that is fine. Um, and if you do watch this video, and this video will give you some information about how you need to set out your work and what information to include and if you're feeling a bit more adventurous you could create a biography using google slides or docs i have included a video how to um use google slides you've been using dots quite a lot um i find for presenting the information that google slides is a lot more user friendly and gives you a lot more scope for adding things like animations. And I have um, included a video there for you. It is not perfect. I do make errors along the way. And you might notice that um, on this one, on this video here, I've spelled Galapagos incorrectly. So it's OS at the end. So please do not copy my spelling. Make sure that you use the spellings that are um, on the slides. Um, and on this one, I'll take you through what needs to be included on a slide, how you can put a background on, how you can change the background. I did put um, in here, I did, when I did a Google search, I um, searched for Darwin's thrushes and rather than finches. But um, the idea is you get an idea of how to create Google Slides. Now, the idea is that this is just a draft and you will submit your draft to your teacher 
and then we will mark them and next week's lesson you will be improving them so that you're doing writing a first draft and next week will be an improved version so here if you want to write how to set out your work and here if you'd like to be push your limits and I do say in the video I have to push my limits all the time we do lockdown learning and um, I had to learn how to use Google Slides last time how to animate um, so don't be afraid and really be prepared to push your limits because I did and you can do some very exciting and interesting things in slides and make them really really um, exciting for your teacher to read so i hope that that's helped you by all means do some more research on charles darwin um today's lesson is going to be taken up probably by um this this introductory video plus your video on how to make your create your work but you have wellbeing wednesday where you can try and get your draft written please make your work of an excellent standard some pieces of work that um, we're receiving at the moment children aren't really pushing their limits this work is equally important to any work that you do in the mornings and should e be equally as creative because when we're back in school i will be asking um for some of this work to come with you so that we can put some pages together on in your um topic book so please think about the standard of your work and really work hard on this so enjoy please feel free to have a um play on google slides and create lots of interesting pieces of work your biography about charles darwin and i will, will leave it over to you now So happy writing, please do an amazing job, include loads of information and use the help, the slides, the videos to help you. Any questions, you know where Miss Francois and myself are, so don't be afraid to ask and I will see you soon. Bye.